Okay, so I want to continue with David David Hume. Uh, just a brief kind of recapitulation or summary. Hume is a, an empiricist. He believes that all knowledge is rooted in sense impressions. He believes that there are. He believes in the representative theory of perception, which Descartes believed in, and and Leibniz, uh, Descartes. All, in fact, all of the major philosophers have believed in, and still do believe in. The representative theory of perception is that we do not perceive objects in the world directly. We perceive representations of them in our mind, and then at best we can make an inference to the world, um, to the outside world. That leads to the problem of the skepticism of the outside world. Um, Hume believed that we all of our knowledge is based upon, has to be rooted in sense, in sense impressions. Uh, there are, and then simple ideas are basically... Uh, faded impressions. We have simple ideas, uh, simple simple ideas and complex ideas. Simple ideas are, the, are for example, I, I, are ideas that cannot be further reduced. For example, our idea of red. You can't break that up into anything else. It's just red is red. That's a simple idea. The, also shapes, the roundness and so on. So for, for Hume, simple ideas uh, can resemble uh, simple impressions. Uh, uh, so my idea of red uh, resembles uh, my the impression of, of red. My idea of uh, when I think of a, a, a round circle, I, I it resembles my, the impression I had of a round circle. Sometimes complex ideas can resemble complex impressions. Like my, for example, my my idea of this apple. It's it's pretty simple. It's just a little object. You know, it has a shape and a color and, and a feel to it and a taste. So this is a complex idea, but it does resemble uh, the, my impression of it because I can remember it. But for example, if you walk around a big city, like say you walk around San Francisco, uh, you have an, a, a, when you walk around it, you have this very complex impression. All these ideas are coming up and impinging on your mind. And when you re recollect it later, your idea, the complex idea of San Francisco or any big city will not uh, resemble uh, the, the impressions because you, you can't remember all the stuff. It just it's too complicated but simple ideas can resemble simple impressions okay anyway for Locke, all knowledge is rooted in sense uh, impression uh, sense impressions so if you are if you claim to have any knowledge of the external world you have to be able to sh uh, show that uh, when, when you break up your complex ideas into simple ideas you must be able to show how those simple ideas cor uh, resemble simple impressions so that's uh luck and for so we uh, w for example uh, what, what what can we know well we can i can know directly things in the present when i perceive this apple i, I I'm, I'm perceiving it right now uh so i have an impression uh a, a, a impression of the apple and I, I have an idea that i form of it so that, that's knowledge it counts as knowledge um knowledge is based upon sense sense of experience so whatever you experience you can have knowledge of you get re i could remember what i experienced in the present like for example i looked at this apple and i put it down now i could remember what i just saw and that's uh so i can extend my knowledge uh through memory so i i have memory of the present and then i accumulate knowledge of the past through memory Okay, so that's uh, you. The, uh, memory allows us to get beyond the present. Um, but then the question is, how can we have knowledge beyond that? I mean, how can we have knowledge beyond simply what we perceive and what we can remember? Because we do claim to have knowledge. I mean, it seems evident that we do. Uh, we, 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 it seems to be the case that we can have knowledge of what's going to happen in the future. Uh, science is based upon that. I mean, and I, for example, to, m most people believe that tomorrow the sun's going to come up and the moon is going to come up and so on. That's all in the future. How do we do that? So we, how do you extend knowledge beyond the present to the future? Also, for example, you're sitting, let's say you're at home, you're sitting on the couch and, so, and you hear a knock, 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 knock at the door. Um, how is it that we know uh, somebody is uh, knocking on the door? Because we don't perceive that we have no perception of that person, right? Well, we just hear a knocking. So if, if all we know is our sense perception, then all we can say is we hear a knocking. Uh, how do we know that someone is knocking on the door? So how do we extend our knowledge be, beyond immediate perception? And Hume says the only way we can do that is through our belief in cause and effect. 
So when I hear a knocking on the door, the reason I believe somebody is knocking on the door is because I know the effect is the effect. There's the every effect has a cause. The knocking has to have a cause, and through experience, I know that the knocking is done by a human somebody knocking. So everything, so we can move beyond the immediate present through our belief in causality. Okay, so let me give an example of uh, of of Hume uh, of of Hume skepticism. Uh, take this apple for example. Since I have an apple, I'll use it as a, an example. Um, if I tell you I'm going to, if I say to you I'm going to let go of this apple, and I ask you what's going to happen, everyone will say what's going to happen is going to fall. And so and actually, so let's see what happens. It did fall. Okay, I say what's going to happen now? It should. It's going to fall. Okay. Now every time I let go of it, it falls. Now I ask you what's going to happen the next time I let go of it, and you're going to say it's going to fall. And it does. Hume wants to know why why are we justified in are we justified in our state our inference that when are we justified in believing that when I let go of this apple it will fall? Are we justified? Do we have a reason to believe it? Hume says we do not we are not rationally justified in believing that well next time I let go of this apple it will fall. Hume gives the example of Adam. It's a thought experiment. God creates Adam, puts Adam in the Garden of Eden. Now Hume doesn't get the example. He gives an example uh, it's just, just like the one I'm giving a different it doesn't really matter. I'll use this one. So imagine that God creates Adam. He puts Adam in the garden and he says to Adam, Adam, hold up he gives Adam an apple. Adam, hold the apple up. Now, like, I'm going to ask you a question, Adam. What's going to happen when you let go of it? Now, when I asked you, every, you, you said, it's going to fall. But now, imagine, this is a thought experiment. God says to Adam, God has just created Adam. So Adam has had no experience of the world whatsoever. He's just been created. He's never seen anyone let go of anything. He's never seen any. He has no experience. He's just learning for the first time. God says to Adam, Adam, hold the apple. Now, I, I asked you a question. I'm going to have you let go of the apple. But before you do, can you tell me what's going to happen? And David Hume says, what, what, what's Adam going to say? Basically, Adam will have no idea whatsoever. Adam will say, uh, <laughs> just, I don't know what's going to happen. He will not have any idea. And that's kind of that's kind of strange, but if you think about it, it's true. If you have no experience, if you've never seen anyone at all ever in your life let go of something, and then somebody says, "What's going to happen when I you let go of it?" You will have no idea. Let's think of a a magnet. If you've never seen a magnet. You take a magnet and you put it against the refrigerator and you get close to the refrigerator and you feel that pull towards the towards the refrigerator, you know, the magnet. If you have another piece of metal, it's not going to do it. But with the magnet, it will. By looking at the magnet, if you've never seen a magnet before and you don't know it's a magnet, you will have no idea. And there's no possible way you could guess what's going to happen until you actually experience what happens when you have a magnet up against metal. And then once you have a magnet, then you get used to it, and you expect the, you expect that attraction. Hume would say this. You, now I'll, I'll talk about Hume's fork. Let's take the uh, for Hume, all knowledge is either a relation of ideas or a matter of fact based upon experience. Now, how can I know that this apple is going to fall when I let go of it? Well, let's look. Let's look at this side of the of the fork. Here are the ideas. One idea is letting go of the apple. I let go of the apple. That's one idea. And that idea is when I asked you what's going to happen, what you did is you connected one idea, letting go of the apple, with another idea. It's going to fall. Letting go of the apple. That's one idea. It will fall. Second idea. You related them. You brought them together. Now, Hume wants to know how that happened. Is there anything in the idea of letting go of an apple that even remotely suggests the idea of 
it will fall. So let go of apple and it will fall. These are two totally separate ideas. There's nothing, Hume would say, there's nothing in the idea of letting go of, it, of something and the other idea of falling. So we, there's no necessary connection between these. Take, it, take two other ideas, C and D. C, it's a circle. If I, if I tell you I've just drawn a circle, tell me something about the thing I just drew, you could say it's round. These are two totally separate ideas. It's being a circle and it's being round, and yet we make the connection, and we do so because it's a necessary connection, because in the idea of something's being a circle, it's necessarily round. So you can make the transition from this to this because it's a necessary condition based on relation ideas. There is no necessary connection between letting go of something and its volume. Okay, so we cannot know, have any knowledge that this apple will fall on, by this side, uh, using this side of the fork. This, this is not a, the, this, uh, the idea that it's going to fall it's not, we're not, it's not, it's not a matter of relating ideas. Okay, so what is it? It's a matter of fact. The only way I can know that this apple was fall is through uh, uh, perception because matters of fact are based upon perception. So you have to actually perceive something. All knowledge is based upon simple sense, of, reasoning from sense impressions. Sense impressions lead to ideas and then we, we, relate those ideas to one another. Now, if I ask you what's going to happen when I let go of this apple, well, I haven't let go of it yet, so you don't you, you can't know through perception. So how how do you know what what how do you know that? Well, Hume would say uh, so a matter of, so we have no perception of. So now, that's the question now. How why do you believe that this apple is going to fall when I let go of it? You don't know. It's, it's not a matter of relating ideas. It's not a matter of fact. So somehow we're going to have to get beyond the, because the, the the letting go of this is the future. It hasn't happened yet, so I can't know it's going to it will fall through perception. So how we have to get beyond the present. Hume says we begin with percept. We begin with uh, facts, perception, perception. All knowledge based upon perception. Now I I'm I'm going to say let go let go of apple of apple uh, now i'm reasoning what's going to happen what what's going to happen is a matter of fact so now we're talking about reasoning from matters of fact how do you extend beyond the immediate present hume says the only way you can get beyond the immediate uh, present is your belief in causality your belief that things cause other things to happen if you ask what if, if i said why do you believe it's going to fall you might say well because of gravity gravity is going to make it fall Okay, now it's so, okay. So, why do you believe when uh, uh, when you hear a knocking at the door that somebody's on the other side of the door? Well, because you believe in cause and effect. You believe that every effect has to have a cause. Now, the the Hume will say this: Why do you believe in causality? And your answer to that is through experience, right? The reason I believe in, when somebody knocks on the door that there's somebody on the other side of the door, uh, I believe in causality. Um, why do you believe in causality? Through experience, because uh, I I uh, when somebody knocks on the door, I open the door and there's another person there. There's always some, some for every effect, through ex experience tells us that there's always a cause. So I believe in uh, when I reason concerning matters of fact, something that I haven't yet seen, I, I, I reason on the basis of causality. Why do I believe in causality? Hume would say, I believe it on the basis of experience. And then Hume would say this, why do you believe that your experience of the past has anything to tell you about the future? And the answer to that, the only answer to that is well, we believe that the future will resemble the past. And then the question is, why do you believe that? And you say, well, from experience. Okay, you're just going in a circle. I believe the future doesn't resemble the past because of experience, but your experience has always been in the past. So the question is always, why do you believe what, what happened in the past will tell you anything about the future? And you're caught this vicious circle. And, and, and basically, it's, you're always assuming that the future will resemble the past, and that is not based upon experience. It's something you bring to experience, and Hume says we have absolutely no reason to believe that because it's neither relation of ideas or a matter of fact. I'll continue that next time, um, but that's all for right now.